So the sum. We, t- yes, we talked at. Uh, yes, sir. At. Uh, OAC, uh, crazy goats. OAC crazy goats. That's crazy goats. Right. Com- complex. Yes, and sir. We, t- we had we had a lot of fun. Yeah, we did. Talked to you and who's the other assistant coach? Uh, Rick Hayden. Rick. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what's been happening between that OAC combine and here? So, so we've been running with our club. We've been uh, getting some of our newer guys up to speed. We just got everybody signed up for the OAC grade school uh, on January second up in Sandusky so we're going to enter a clear fork team uh, so that's something new that our our little neighborhood hasn't had before uh, we sent a couple more of our advanced guys are starting to branch out we went down to uh, uh, West Penn Duels and a lot of our guys we had a couple guys that had their first like regional or national experience that you want to call it we did super 32 with a couple more folks and we just had three folks get back from VACs, and we had you know, a lot of success down there. So it's you guys are you're really starting to branch out into local Central Ohio stuff to regional and national. Yep, and tomorrow we've got a big group going to the Lexington Open. Okay. So we're trying to hit get everybody a uh, a pretty good shake. Now tomorrow we're just filling in one spot for uh, Waller's All American team. So I know Anthony better be on his best behavior, or the, uh, I know Coach Waller's a, a hand grenade. <laughs> so. Okay, you fly, right? Yes, sir. Were any anything lately? So actually, we were up here last weekend. We had a uh, military service uh, down at Chardon, and we were uh, orbiting over. Chardon's right by my mm-hmm. house. That's like so I drive we were, through it every day. We were flying up there on Saturday with that crazy weather. Ten miles away from my mm-hmm. house. Yeah. Wow. We were orbiting. Crazy pay- wind. Yeah, it was nuts. And what do you fly? The C-130s. Which is massive? They're big planes, yeah. Was that the plane that the Afghani people were clinging to? That was the C-17. Can you fly that too? No. No, 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 no. no. That's totally a different No, that that's a, that's more of a big beast. We're kind of a tactical. I mean, that's like the size of like half it, of this it's hallway. Huge. It's huge. Right? Yeah. It'd be like to that second pillar, mm-hmm. wouldn't it? Yeah, it's a big. It's, that's massive. It's a big plane. It's huge. But and the, all the refugees were on it and they were hanging out. Yeah, and no, it was that, sad, obviously. It wasn't, yeah, it's, it's, it wasn't our, it, that wasn't our type of aircraft. Yeah. We're more, a little bit more uh, aerial delivery stuff, you know, kicking big pallets out the back and stuff like that. So, I mean, most we can carry is about 62 people. So, I started my kids in wrestling and they had their first yes, competition sir. last week and they're, they're doing okay, right? The mm-hmm. youngest one has no what's going on. He's four or whatever. Older one likes to win and likes to wrestle, right? Yes, He's five. Sir. How important is it to just keep them local? And when do you think is the good transition? Because that's what you said. Right. You're starting to transition to some kids into to regional and national. How long do you keep them local for? And what's a good age to send them national? Um, so. For so, you. Hold on. So, okay. Every kid's different. Stop. Right, so, Loaded question. Every kid's different. For you. So for Anthony... Like I said, usually you can tell like the kids who are gonna get after it. Anthony, I, you know, Anthony was lucky enough to be an aggressive kid. Um, so I guess my advice is, you know, start them off with the novice tournaments local. That's where we're at. And then go novice and open, you know, because honestly for these kids, it's all about mat time and just getting them out there. You know, they're gonna start ripping through the same f- six or seven kids at these local tournaments, and once they start you know, winning more, or maybe not, but, you know, start entering them into the open tournaments. So, you know, Anthony's, the year before Anthony started doing, like, the regional circuit, like, he was kind of doing eight matches a weekend at, like, you know, he'd do the novice in the morning and then the open in the afternoon. And he'd, you know, either win all the novice or lose one or two, and then he'd probably go about 500. And then, you know, by the end of that year, he was used to wrestling tough bodies. And, you know, it's just... You start seeing it like once you start getting, you know, eighty percent of your matches that you're winning, it's time to start expanding and start it's tr- time to start trying to get the uh, that winning percentage about five hundred. You don't want to beat them down. You don't want to take them to Tulsa yeah. every weekend. But like I said, some like if you're batting, you know, if you're batting a thousand, you're not challenging them, and if you're batting less than five hundred, he's probably not enjoying himself. So it's finding that sweet spot. So it's you know for the young young guys. Get them out to as many matches as they can. You know, they're they're young, they're, they're pliable, they bounce. Um, but other than that, like I would say, you know, that sweet spot between between 500 and about 80 percent. 
Last thing I'll leave you with, you can tell me your philosophy, whether this fits it or not, but I asked a coach last week, my kids are four and five right now, I'm like, mm-hmm. how do you make your kids love this? And he said, you can't make them love it, but you can absolutely make them hate it. Yeah. Yep. Do you feel like that, is oh, that, that true? That rings true. It really does. And, you know, with the little, little guys, you know, you got about 45 minutes. You know, the four, four and five-year-olds, you got about 45 minutes, and after that they wander off. So. Yep. You know, I think a lot of coaches just need to set their expectations. You know, it's been a while since I've had a five and, you know, four or five year old. So I, every year I kind of got to get re, you know, recenter my gyro about what the expectations are for these little guys. And, you know, there's just been a little bit of learning, learning curve for them and for me, like with who I've got, how do I treat each kid? Because everybody's different. You, you know, we pat some on the back, you know, you kick some in the butt and you leave some of them alone. No, I mean, it's really just kind of, I mean, that's coaching in general. Yeah, and it's kid by kid. Yep. Okay, uh, defense soap. Did you get some defense soap? Oh, yeah. I'd, I've got a stack of those the, the bars at home. Yeah, what about one? Why, why not take one? A bar lasts oh, we got one. two months, right? Oh, we got one. All right. Yes, sir. And then those individual wipes are saving my butt. Oh, yeah. You don't even know. I, they, they bailed me out of the grease a couple times. Yeah, I, took, I took them over to the desert. They're great. Oh, man. Wiping, Crazy wiping sand out of armpits. Yeah, and, and cra- stuff cracks, like. other cracks. Yeah, yeah I got you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, you got anything else? No, thanks for uh, all you guys are doing. Once again, listening to the Barbarian Hour all the time. Oh yeah, it's you fun. liking it? Yeah, yeah. It's fun. Am I shutting up more? Uh, you're doing great. Gotta shut up. You're more. doing great. Gotta shut up more. Gotta do better. I'll give you notes after the uh, tape oh. stops rolling. Good yeah. luck to you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you.